Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today you can see we've got the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Veloce with me and of course this is basically Alfa, Alfa Romeo's uh, SUV. It's based on the Giulia platform, of course a platform that we're all very familiar now. The Giulia's got a lot of positive press over the years and it's a great car so it can surely only be a good thing that the Stelvio shares a platform with it. There are a couple of sort of adaptations to that platform. It is slightly raised obviously to give the uh, sort of extra ground clearance that this car needs. But yeah, basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a little look around and overview of this car today and talk about some of the things I like and some of the things I don't like about it and also why it might be a very good choice to buy if you're in the market for an SUV. So as I say, this is actually a shared platform with the Giulia and there are a few differences. It's not just kind of like shifted over to the Stelvio and, you know, new body panels uh, put on. As I say, it is uh, actually elevated slightly just to give that extra ground clearance. We've also got a 50 millimeter wider track on the front and 30 mm wider track on the rear. So, you know, it gives it a slightly bigger poise on the road and probably actually helps to handle some of that higher, sort of higher center of gravity. And yeah, just keep the car flatter through the corners as well. Okay, so the Stelvio Veloce actually has the two liter four cylinder turbo engine that we've seen in the Giulia Veloce. And actually for that matter, all engines in the Stelvio are shared with the Giulia. So that's definitely a good thing. So in this application, it makes 280 horsepower, 296 uh, pound foot of torque, which is pretty adequate. We will get onto kind of the weight and things of this car a bit later on, but that provides uh, 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds and top speed of 144 miles an hour. So it's pretty good. Now I see this as a very sensible SUV choice. Obviously we've seen this quite strange sort of SUV fad over the sort of past few years where every manufacturer seems to be making endless SUVs. I don't quite understand it if I'm totally honest with you, but you know, it is what it is. This is clearly what people want these days. But as I say, this seems like a really sensible choice. Alfa Romeo have put a lot of thought into how this car is sort of going to be produced and engineered. This isn't just a massive piece of metal for like a market employee that looks cool and just to sell cars. There's been a lot of thought that's gone, on to, gone into it. So we've got all aluminium engine block. We've got loads of aluminium body panels. We've even got a carbon fiber prop shaft. So all this basically saves a chunk of weight over other SUVs in the market. And actually this comes in at 1,660 kilos in the Veloce spec. Now for comparison, the G80 M3 just released by BMW a few weeks ago, actually weighs 1,800 kilos. So that's 140 kilos more than this. And this car obviously will look, you know, at least from a side profile, substantially bigger than an M3, but actually it weighs quite, quite a lot less. So yeah, it's very interesting. And as I say, they've really put a lot of thought into making this car actually good to drive. You know, it's actually going to do a job and it's not just gonna look good on the road. So all Alfa Romeo Stelvios actually come with the eight speed ZF gearbox. If you've seen any of my other reviews, you'll know this is a fantastic gearbox. It's probably one of the best gearboxes out there actually in terms of its all round usability, uh, the sharpness of gear changes and just, just how subtle it is on the road. So yeah, that's a fantastic gearbox and you can actually get the Stelvio in either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Obviously, again, being that shared platform, it is a rear wheel drive platform. And in the all wheel drive setup, it can send up to 50% of the power to the front wheels. So that's pretty nice. And it is obviously predominantly a rear wheel drive car in that setup. So that works really nicely. Um, again, they, they've really thought about the engineering kind of standpoint on this. They've got double wishbone suspension on the front end just to keep that car, you know, really nice and composed, really help the handling out as well. Um, and again, it's, it's just really cool that they've actually got a double wishbone setup. It's multi-link on the rear, so, you know, it's maybe not, uh, you know, it's built to a price point, but that, that's not what matters. And uh, actually speaking of the price, this car as spec'd here is around about 51,000 pounds in the UK. Uh, the, the Stelvio Veloce starts at 49,000 pounds and the Stelvio itself, just the base model, starts at around 44,000. So yeah, it's, it's probably around about um, on par with its competitors actually. It's not particularly overpriced or underpriced. And yeah, I mean, that's a great thing. So I actually really, really like the way the Stelvio looks. These days we're seeing a lot of these kind of strange looking SUVs, just really quite ugly. I mean, BMW have obviously got the X4 and the X6 kind of coupe things. Porsche have got the uh, KN coupe. I just don't think they look very good. There's just massive chunks of metal, like really rounded off. It just looks a bit odd. Whereas this is kind of like reminiscent of the coupe style, but it's also got the classic SUV look on it. So I think it's a really good balance between the two. 
The front end of the Stelvio is obviously quite classic Alfa Romeo. We've got this sort of triangulated grille, which looks really nice. We've got this kind of piano black insert on there as well. A nice badge on the front. We've also got these kind of little, little front splitter kind of section that comes through that looks really nice. Of course, these nice thin lights. I love that. It looks really nice and kind of sleek and it just gives it a really nice road presence. Um, yeah, they've done a fantastic job. There's kind of a nice level of vents and grills on the front, but not to the point where the whole thing's just a grill and it's incredibly fake looking. So, of course, coming down to the wheels, we've got these pretty nice, actually, 20 inch alloys uh, in kind of like this really dark gray color against the red calipers. Of course, this is quite classic of Alfa Romeo. They always like to make a big deal out of the brakes and I love that. I love a good looking set of calipers and discs. So yeah, this works really nicely. 20 inch wheels, I mean, of course, we're in, a, we're in a period of time where big wheels are something that for some reason everyone wants. 20 inch is probably, you know, that's kind of the border. It's not like the RS6, for example, with these ridiculous 22 inch wheels. So that works pretty well. And we do have a decent amount of tire profile as well. These are actually a 45 profile tire. So yeah, the ride quality is actually very good. And yeah, it's just well thought out and it works really nicely with the car. Moving down the side profile of the car, We've got these blacked out badges. I think that looks really good. It contracts uh, really nicely with this kind of dark gray paint. Um, yeah, it's a really nice touch with that. And actually all the trims blacked out around the windows, which of course is another quite common theme, but I think it really works nicely with this color actually. We've just got this quite nice crease actually that front runs all the way from the front wheel arch across the handles, all the way to the back of the car and kind of folds around into the lights, which looks great. And actually, this car isn't necessarily as tall as you might think. I'm like five foot ten, and I'm probably a good few inches taller than the top of the car. So, as I kind of spoke about earlier, this is a, a quite a nice combination between classic SUV style and coupe style. It's got like you know sloping roof line and stuff, which you again can see really nicely coming down the back there into almost like a little bit of a spoiler there. So, yeah, that works really nicely, and again, just looks fantastic to me. So moving on to the rear of the car then, again, I'm really, yeah, I really quite like how this looks. This maybe is a little bit chunky, you know, it maybe doesn't look as good as some of the other SUVs out there that are a little bit kind of slimmer, but yeah, I think it looks over, overall pretty good. Again, like I said, we've got that little spoiler, that crease that runs all the way from the front wheel arch kind of folds into this bit here and around the lights. So I really like the way that looks actually. Nice small badge, blacked out badges again. We've got the Q4 badge to uh, indicate that it's all wheel drive and these really nice blacked out uh, exhausts. My only kind of dislike with this is the fact you can quite clearly see the actual exhaust sitting within those. So that doesn't look great, but from a distance on the road, actually, you don't really notice that. It's only when you get closer that you can see the actual exhaust in there. So it's a shame that couldn't kind of wrap into the kind of exhaust fitting a little bit better. We do have this very small diffuser effect thing, but it's extremely subtle actually. And to be honest, this would probably look a little bit better if that was slightly more aggressive to maybe match the front end. But overall, this is just mine and minor things really. So interior of the Stelvio then, what do we think? Well, this is very high quality actually. The materials in here smell and feel fantastic. This leather, this kind of perforated leather is just, yeah, it's amazing. I'm really quite a big fan of these seats actually you know some of these seats out there aren't particularly amazing but the bolsters on these are really nice i can feel them just kind of like keeping you in the position now and imagine if you did push on in this car um, it would really stop you from kind of flying about as i say the, the material usage in here is, is great it's mostly covered in leather i can barely see any cheaper plastics really i mean maybe the stalks feel a little bit cheap some of this um kind of for the climate control isn't the best looking but you know what it's it's really really nicely done in here We've got this kind of like metal effect piece on here that runs all the way uh, across the sort of center console there and across the doors. So yeah, it's just great. We've got a Harman Kardon sound system in here. Again, we're seeing these on uh, a lot of cars now and it's a great system. I've, I've had that in some BMWs and minis and yeah, I really can't fault that. Of course, we've got these really nice aluminium paddles as well. And yeah, this... <laughs> This is just where Alfa Romeo shines through. You can really see the effort they put into making these cars feel special. The fact these are column mounted as well is something really that is relatively exclusive to much more higher end cars like supercars and things. So yeah, it just really feels like they put a lot of effort in. The steering wheel is great. It's got a little bit of perforated leather on the insides and it's a nice narrow rim as well. None of those stupid thick rims. So yeah, really kind of pleased with how this feels in here. And I think they've done a great job. 
for the model year 20 cars, there were some updates. Um, for example, there's this little Italian flag down here near the gear shifter, which is a really cool touch. And actually, this infotainment system looks a lot sort of nicer and it looks a lot more high end actually than the first cars did. So yeah, it's, it's just really nicely done. And we've got electric seats, uh, electric memory seats as well. Uh, we've got this beautiful panoramic roof, which obviously opens up as well. Yeah, it just feels like a very premium place to be. And I suppose actually one of the biggest criticisms of these cars when they came out, it's the Giulia and the Stelvio, was the interiors lacked a little bit. But actually coming in this, um, I do think things have been improved. It definitely feels like that money is very, very well spent. So in the rear of the car then, how does it feel? Well, you know, plenty of space back here. This is really quite nice. There's not the biggest amount of leg room, but this driver's seat is quite far back. And as I said, I'm five foot 10. There's plenty of room back here. I'd be more than comfortable. The middle seat's nice and wide. These seats are actually really soft. You get in the back of some cars and the seats are rock hard. So yeah, this is a very comfortable place. We've got USB ports. We've got the rear climate control, slightly tinted windows as well for the extra privacy. It just feels great back here. You could quite easily do long distances with four, four adults in the car, possibly five. So yeah, nice job. So storage space in the Stelvio Corsman and SUV is uh, really fantastic, actually. There's so much room in here. This boot's absolutely huge. I would say it's got to be stretching probably at least four foot back from the entry. And, you know, we've got a good sort of three or four foot in height as well. So I'd imagine you can fit an awful lot of stuff in here. Um, the, the rear seats will fold down as well. Again, providing even more room. Yeah, we've got these nice little sections down the side as well that you can put little bits and pieces in. Yeah, it's, it's just really nicely done. We've got the load shelf. If you were gonna use this car with a family with tons of luggage, this would be perfect. So overall, I've been mighty impressed by the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Uh, very similar to the Giulia, actually. It's just a great car, and it's great to see Alfa Romeo coming back into the game with things like this that are really challenging those German brands and offering something that is really quite unique and different so these kind of like quite homogenous cars that we're seeing coming out of some countries now. So yeah, I'm, I really like this thing. And if I was in the market with something like this, uh, I think I'd actually put the, put the Stelvio probably above a lot of other cars, to be honest. Hopefully you can see from this kind of walk around that there's just so many good points about it. Everything's done to a really high standard and Alfa Romeo have really thought things through both from an engineering standpoint and as well as how they're actually gonna market the car and make it work for people. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.